The applications we have built so far have been single-page apps. But a lot of real-world applications have more than one page, and that's our next topic. Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a Xamarin Forms hierarchical navigation. 2. Add gesture recognizers to a view. Now let's open the Visual Studio and do some coding. Let's start with what we call hierarchical navigation. The navigation page class provides a hierarchical navigation experience where the user can navigate through pages, forwards and backward, as desired. The class implements navigation as a last-in, first-out, LIFO, stack of page objects. Now let's add two more pages to navigate. back in our main page. Let's add two labels. What I want to do is to go to about page when I click about label and go to Courses page when I click this course label. Unfortunately, unlike buttons, the label element does not support the tapped or click event. So how are we gonna do that? In Xamarin Forms there is what we call Gesture Recognizer. Gesture Recognizers can be used to detect user interaction with views in a Xamarin Forms application. The Xamarin Forms Gesture Recognizer class supports tap, pinch, pan, swipe, and drag and drop gestures on view instances. Here, we both add tap gesture recognition to our labels. So whenever we tap the label, the tapped events will fire. Let's go to code behind and implement the events. This line causes the About Page and Courses page instance to be pushed onto the navigation stack, where it becomes the active page. Now, what if the page we intend to push contains a lot of data that took time to load? In that case, we need to add async and await to the method or event handler. Using async methods for long running tasks, like downloading data, helps keep your user interface responsive, while not using async methods, or the improper use of async slash await, can cause your app's UI to stop responding to user input until the long-running task completes. This can result in a poor user experience, which can then lead to poor reviews on the app stores, which is never good for business. Let's also add title in our pages. For the final step, go to App Class. We need to wrap our main page inside a navigation page.
This is a requirement for implementing a navigation. Let's run the application. Here is our navigation bar. Let's also add a title to our main page. So if we click this label, we go another page and now the currently active page. Again in the navigation bar, we have the title and a back button that takes us back to where we came from. So this is what we call hierarchical navigation. Now let me show you how to add your own back command using a swipe gesture. Here in about page, we added gesture recognizer to the stack layout with swipe gesture and direction to right. So whenever we swipe this page to right, the swiped event trigger. Let's go to the code behind to implement the swipe event. This causes this about page to be removed from the navigation stack and return to the previous page becoming the active page. Let's reload the app. Then swipe to the right. You can also change the back color and fore color of the navigation bar. So here in our app class, to change the property of the navigation bar, we need to set it upon initializing the navigation page. There you have it. In my next video lesson, I will be showing you how to create a tabbed page. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!